What's good? This is Mighty the Ruler, and I'm back with more hip hop and entertainment news. Make sure y'all hit that like, share, and subscribe button, and click that notification bell so you get notified each and every time I upload new content. Trendsetter Shady activated his Instagram page to come on and address rumors that he has something to do with telling on ARAP or somehow he was involved in the case, so he came to clear his name. Uh, we know that there was beef between. Uh, Trendsetter Shady and ARAP's OBH crew, Dark Low, and others have done diss tracks as well as interviews uh, detailing what the issues was. But I'm going to let Trendsetter tell you in his own voice uh, his involvement or non-involvement in the ARAP case. Get in the comment section. Let me know what y'all think about this. You haven't heard from me for a long time, and you probably after this won't hear from me again. Really really remove myself from social media and just living my life in a way where as though it's just open for public opinion and criticism and things like that. Uh, over the last two years, yeah, I'm cool. I'm straight, believe me. Over the last year and a half, 19 months, all I've been hearing is you know, slanders against my name and whatnot. And I would have thought by, you know, them brothers going to trial and they, and they paperwork every inch of it becoming public record, I would have thought, like, you know, people would have just fell back off that stance and whatnot. But the thing is this, it's sad in this day and age where they just using my name for clickbait, where they using a... Uh, old videos, people using old videos, putting it up, using this clickbait as if they as if that's me talking. Uh over the last two years I've lost a lot, I've gained a lot. And one of the things that I've really gained back is my peace of mind. You understand know what I'm saying? I gained my peace of mind back. No getting high, no none of that. Been able just to get back to being Muslim and just falling back, X, Y, and Z. Uh, it's been, you know, it's been sad. It's been funny. I've been up. I've been down. I've been seeing a lot. I pay attention. You know, I heard people say, you know, I'm in witness protection. I've been locked, locked up by the feds. Uh, I caught this case. I caught that case. Uh, I'm doing this. I'm doing that. When in reality, yo, none of that has went on. You understand what I'm saying? And it's just sad. It's just a sad, we live in a sad state, sad state. And I ain't talking about state geographical-wise, the state that we live in, like, mentally. is people, you know, they, they, they push a narrative that's only, you know, uh, beneficial to them. They push whatever narrative that's beneficial to them. <laughs> I had people calling my phone, friends of mine, like, damn, bro, they saying you got on the stand. I got on the stand? Bro, let me tell you something. The moment I give up some paperwork or the moment I get on the stand on anybody, that shit is going to be on CNN before I'm off the stand or before the paperwork is signed. You understand? This social media thing is real tricky. Sometimes coming to defend yourself, you can incriminate yourself. And that's what it would be with me a lot of times. If I defend myself from certain things or certain accusations. I'll be like almost incriminating myself too. So the thing is just I'm just be quiet. Like just be quiet and know that I'll explain and know that when people when I see these people personally, not fans or not, you know, uh supporters or nothing like that or hecklers, but when I see people personally involved in certain things, they gotta look me in my eyes and Whatever accusations they got, we we we'll deal with that right then and there. But for the most part, for the most part, you know, I've been, you know, you listen to my music. For people that really followed me and paid attention to my day to day things, uh, I've been. What's up, Joey? I've been trying to reach out to you on Facebook. You lost your Facebook, bro. You got to send me a message or something. But. <clears throat> For the most part, you know, uh, 
I've been primarily off the grid because I've been living my life. These things, these, I'm not putting out no mu- mu- new music. Like, I'm not even focused on that. Like, I got a new daughter, <laughs> my daughter nine months. I got a son. I have an older daughter that I, you know, it's really my duty to really reconnect with them and do what I need to do by them. You know what I mean? Uh, it's just, like I said, for the last year, two two years, all I've been hearing is crazy nonsense. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, Passport Global. Yeah, all I've been hearing is crazy nonsense, and it's, and it's just sad. People just want to have a conversation with me. Uh, Passport Global, that's my guy. He, he came to test of my whereabouts every which way, every second of the day. But he definitely tell you, like, any time he tapped in over these last two years, even when people were saying he locked up, he didn't see that, he definitely will let you know, like, you know, hey, nah, that ain't, that ain't really it. And I've had other people that I talk to, it's just that I closed my life down. Like, you know, I closed my life down. It's a couple of things. You know what I mean? Give me two seconds. Even with catching the case, getting the marijuana DUI, you had people that really, <laughs> that really was saying because I caught a marijuana DUI that, you know, it was possible that I cooperated because of that. It's a marijuana DUI. The first time I ever caught a DUI in the last time, because I don't even get high no more and I'm not a drinker. But it was a marijuana DUI that I was facing a mandatory minimum of 72 hours to six months. I did two years, never told on nobody. Did eight years, never told on nobody. Did two more years, never told on nobody. That's a total of 12 years, and I'm only 34. So my whole life is what I'm telling you is I've been being, being locked up and incarcerated. I just put myself in a position where as though I don't have to have my life scrutinized on social media. And this video is primarily for everybody that's using me, my name, or clickbait. I don't want nothing to do with nobody's situation. Nothing to do with nobody's situation. Period. I don't have no comment. I don't have no opinion. I don't. I really just remove myself from stuff that don't concern me. I gracefully bowed out, gracefully. And I know they're gonna use that statement right there. It's clickbait. Trump said it's shady. Gracefully bowed out. Yeah, I gracefully bowed out. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know, I gracefully bowed out. And that's just it, man. Motherfuckers talking shit in this location. They say I moved from. They say I packed up my store, packed up my barbershop, and I ran. Well, people that was really around me, they know I kind of, like, lost the store in, like, 2000, end of 2016, beginning of 2017. People that was really around me know that the barbershop went south because I had a partner that we just, the shit just didn't work with me. You understand what I'm saying? People that was really around me know people that's accusing me of things. They wasn't around me. Like, people that was really around me know who was around me. I had one individual say I said something or did something, and it's like, Allah, you don't even know this guy's name. I don't even know this guy. I had people that I took care of, people that lived with me. You know what I mean? They they could tell you, like, shit, shit, you never had this guy around. This guy was never around. <laughs> you know what I mean? This guy was never.